Hey guys, welcome to the shop and welcome to part 1173 of the old Chevy square body build. Now it takes a lot to make a guy want to tackle a project like this. And I'll tell you what done it. And that is the rear axle on this truck. I twisted off a rear axle and not to mention everything else that could be broken on this truck was. And I had it, you know, up to here. And I just decided that it was time to, you know, tackle this thing, show it a little bit of love. So today I want to make sure that history doesn't repeat itself. And I want to build that rear axle to a point to where under normal uses, I should never have any more problems with it. At least that's the plan. So let's get started on that. It should be fun. I got some awesome, really awesome parts to add to it. Oh, gosh. I don't know why they call it a funny bone, because there's nothing funny. Oh, maybe it's funny when someone else does it. So this is the rear end that we're going to be putting under the truck. It's exactly what it come with factory. It's a GM 10 bolt. And there's a couple ways to identify these. One is that there's 10 bolts that go around and hold the diff cover on. And I think that's what most people go by, the diff cover count or the bolts on the diff cover and then there's probably the primary reason why they're called a 10 bolt at least in my opinion and that is because there are 10 bolts that hold the ring gear onto the diff housing and i believe that's probably why they're actually a 10 bolt not necessarily the count on the cover but you know they're 10 bolts in either case so you know easy way to identify these now not necessarily the rear end that you'd probably build for drag racing but it is a good rear end for everyday use and there's things that you can do to these to make them pretty strong and that's what we're going to do is we're going to pack this thing full of quality components and uh, hope that we never have any issues with this thing moving forward so let's clean it up on the inside or at the outside later and then uh, you know i'll show you the stuff that i got this pack inside of here it's gonna be awesome so when it comes to axle building I'm not the world's leading authority uh, in the, on the topic, but I contacted several manufacturers and ended up, Yukon got back with me within a few minutes and some of these manufacturers I haven't even heard back from, just simple questions. They got back with me quick. They also answered every question that I had. They even kind of asked me what was the transmission in my truck? What was the transfer case? What motor was I using? What was my primary use for this truck gonna be? And they recommended a gear ratio. They also recommended all of these components to make sure that I don't end up with a broken axle, you know, in the end, because that's what started all of this. So just so you're wondering, I did buy these parts, although Yukon did give me a good deal on them. So big thanks to those guys. They were super helpful. So I'll put some links in the description if you want to check these guys out for yourself, but I'm blown away and you'll see, we'll show you these parts at the quality of the stuff. So I have complete faith that we're going to have a hardcore 10 bolt axle if that exists when we're done. So let me show you this stuff and we'll unbox it and start putting it in the rear end of this truck. So there's our ring and pinion 373. Really nice looking set of gears along with a master rebuild kit that come with Tempkin bearings which is really nice because that's what I would have bought if I'd have bought these components individually along with replacement bolts to bolt our ring gear to our a carrier or to our differential because you really don't want to reuse those seals along with marking compound to check our contact path and all of the shims that you need to set your bearing preload. So this master kit really does have everything that you need to set up a rear end minus some of the specialty tools like a dial indicator and stuff. But as far as components, this kit has everything, even the acid brush. So super nice kit. So a lot of you guys may remember in the axle, originally we had a G80 GovLock, which wasn't in that great a shape and does not have the best track record. What we're going to be upgrading to, at least for now, is this DuraGrip from Yukon. Now, I am in line for a Grizzly Locker, which is from Yukon as well, but due to part shortages, like we all know, that's a real thing right now, they're not available. So I'm going to be setting up with this Yukon DuraGrip, and maybe in the future we'll see changing it out to a Grizzly. Although the Grizzly is a little heavier duty than the uh, DuraGrip, it's also more aggressive in the way that it locks. So we'll see. 
we may end up keeping this, but I do plan potentially to put a grizzly locker in this thing. We're also upgrading our axles and differential from 29 spline to 30 spline. And these are the axles that I'm using, which are 4340 chrome Molly. Really nice. So let's uh, unbox these axles and then start prepping these components to get installed. So before I install a gear set, I like to lay my eyes on them really close, look for any burrs that were left during the machining process because they're on all of them, and get those off so they don't break off into my newly built rear end or front end and cause premature wear. So I'm gonna be using a little angle grinder, a little air-powered angle grinder with a Scotch-Brite pad on the end just to dress off these sharp edges because they're not needed. Otherwise, they're just gonna break off. So what we're going to do is run around this ring gear, removing all of the burrs that are left on this from the machining process. I'm also going to knock off, or just go down these super sharp edges. You're not going to hurt this ring gear with a red Rolock disc or Brillo, you know, just lightly removing those sharp edges. Trust me, it'll be better in the long run if we can get those super sharp edges off of here. Hello, Bobby. How are you? So I came over here at the bottom of the cutter grinder to get a small abrasive stone because I'm grinding out an old bearing for fitting purposes on this rear end. And I heard something shuffling around down in here. So I wonder what it is. It's probably a mouse. Hello? There's mouse nest. So it was. Sorry guys, you're gonna get evicted. Okay, so if you would, bear with me for just a second while I explain to you, try to, what I'm doing over here on the surface plate with all these pinion bearings. Now we've got the old set here that come out of that rear end originally, and I'm using these for mock-up. And what I've done to them is take a die grinder and just hone out the inside a bit there so they slide on nice and easily, no pressing involved. And what this will allow me to do is mock up my, the rear end here to determine what size shim I need to set behind this in order to get the proper contact path. And I got to thinking, well, if I use these setup bearings, you know, it'll only matter if the two bearings are the same, old versus new. And what I found is that my new bearing surprisingly, is about eight thousandths of an inch thinner than the old bearing. So what that tells me is that in order to get the same pinion stick out in the case that I get with my mock-up bearings, I'll have to add an, eight, an extra eight thousandths of an inch shim to the back of the pinion there on my final assembly bearings. These are Hyatt Clarks, these are Tempkin, inquiring minds wanted to know, so I checked them. I'm glad I did. So that's it. I'm done. Thanks for listening. So even though I'm just test fitting things right at this moment, I need to make me really quick over on the lathe a bearing race driver. Now they sell them in kits. I don't have one, but I need to make out of this chunk of aluminum, which is softer than the bearing races, and I can drive these in without damaging them, is a driver out of this chunk of aluminum that is 2.688, you know, minus on the OD, or 68 millimeter. So let's go over to lathe and just spin off really quick a driver that we can use to seat our bearing races in that won't damage 
our new bearings. So this large chunk of aluminum made me think of my buddy Jeff Erdman who sent me this some time back. And his son is who made my new channel logo. If you look at my logo, my little guy on the channel, he's changed. We got Peanut, and now we got Elizabeth on there and me, all you know, with spray welders, and it's really awesome. And Zek, Jeff's son, is a super talented artist. And if you're interested in any channel art, stuff for your business, things like that, logos, whatever, I'm gonna put uh, Zek's information up on the screen and you can contact him. He's a super great guy. And uh, it, would, it would mean a lot to me if you need something, if you went to him. They've helped me out a ton and they're just good people. So go check them out if you need some nice channel art or business art. So our dimensions here are not real critical. All we need to do is be slightly smaller than the outside diameter of our race here. And that's all we need. So let's come in and measure our stock, which is 3.125 or three and an eighth of an inch or 79 millimeters for you metric guys. And we can come in and we can zero on this. Let's do it that way. We'll zero and we'll come in and measure our difference in between our stock and our bearing race. That gives us a difference of 0.438 or 11 millimeters. So we know at a minimum, we need to pull off 11.1 millimeters or 4.38 inches or 0.438 inches, and then that'll be good. So we'll pull off 450 thousandths. That'll give us a basically a 10 thousandths clearance around our OD, and we're good to go. So we'll just come in, touch off, zero our dials, pull off 450 thousandths, and it should work. When you hear that sound change, you know you got it seated. So there we go. No damage to the race because the aluminum's much softer. So there's our pinion with our factory shim on there, or not our test fit bearings. Just slide over there nice and easy. There's the front test fit bearing. Same deal, no slop, just slides on there. So we can assemble and disassemble this thing extremely easily. So I'll get this thing tightened down to its uh, rotational torque for used bearings. You know, snug it up good, and then we'll start test fitting the rest of the stuff. So while I'm test fitting this rear end together, I grabbed the original yoke that come off of it and I cleaned it up because I hadn't done that yet. And unfortunately, I found that it has a pretty badly worn seal groove in the area here on the front. And I started to act like I didn't see that at all. Stick that together and hope that it didn't leak. But I know if I stick this thing together with a groove that deep on it that is that rough, I mean, it's like a rusty ring at the bottom. It's like sandpaper that it won't be two weeks before this thing starts pouring oil, 
gear fluid out of the pinion seal and I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do, I made a plate here just to bolt this to so I can hold it in the fore jaw. I'm gonna remove this dust shield, turn this down a little bit, remove the damage, and then spray weld this thing up, build it up with the spray welder, turn it back down to original size, put the shield back on, and then I can continue with what I was doing, and that is putting that rear end together. Try to get that shield off of there. So I'm all set up in the lathe, about two thousandths of an inch run out, which is perfectly fine, about as close as I can get it. We are shooting for a final measurement of 49.25 millimeter or 1.940 inch. What I'm going to do, turn this down 10, 15 thousandths of an inch, do a thread pass on it. So my uh, uh, material that I spray on here will have um, some material to bite to or a surface that it can adhere to and then we'll Spray weld it up, turn it down to 1.940 or 49.25 millimeter, and then uh, give it a polish and should be done. That was 10, pulling off another five. I want to get to the bottom of the damage. Well, I think that's good enough. Well, no, I still got a little bit of rust there. I'm gonna pull off another five. That'll clean us up completely because that stuff, I don't trust it sticking to rust. So the reason we use two fuel tanks on this torch is because it uses so much fuel that one tank just can't keep up and you risk pulling uh, the acetone that's in this tank that the acetylene is dissolved in. You risk pulling that acetone into the lines, through your regulator, through the gun, sprays it out onto your job, just ruins everything, or it can. Ruins your uh, flow meter. So we use two tanks on the fuel side to stop that from happening. For a masking compound to keep my metal spray from sticking to everything else, I'm going to use some Dicom. It works really well. So I'm just going to put this where I don't want that spray to stick. So we're going to do a preheat 
we'll do a bond coat and then we'll do our final build up. And this thing pops pretty loud when it uh, ignites. So hopefully that worked out. I think it did. So here's my 500 degree pin. I, I don't want this to, to really get over that. And we're just now starting to break down this 500 degree pin, which is 260 degrees C. So I'm gonna let this cool for a second. And then I, I think I'm gonna make one more pass on this thing just to be safe. So 1.940 is my final. And I'm 1.963, and at the very back corner, 55. So I'm at least 15 thousandths over. I think that I'm good. I'd like to have about 20 to cut off there total. I think I'm going to go ahead turn it down see what I got and if I need to build up again I can, always can I'll just keep set up until then so I'm not a big expert at this I've only done it a handful of times but with a small part like this you can only put on so much before you start overheating the part and that's kind of what I was worried about and I think we're good we'll see I'm gonna let this thing cool down a little bit more before I do the final cut on it. I think we're gonna make it. We still got about 12 thousandths. good enough.
Looks good. So that looks awesome. I think I undershot it actually by about a thou, but it doesn't matter. No, we're good. Yeah, about a thou. That's okay. Perfect, actually. That seal doesn't care if it's a thou under. It just cares if there's not a huge ridge in there to chew it up. So check that out. Looks pretty good. Little low spot back here, but doesn't matter. The seal doesn't run back there. So that turned out awesome. Perfect finish for that seal to run on and should you know last from now on. So the reason I didn't pull this yoke out and use it is because it's probably no better than the one that I had in there. Plus I don't want to upset this rear end because technically, I mean, you could use it. And this is our dust shield. It goes right there. Keeps weeds and stuff from wrapping around our uh, yoke there and ruining the pinion seal. We're going to rebuild it real quick with some semi-gloss black Rust-Oleum paint. There we go. She's rebuilt. So I just heated this up enough to, it expands a bit. I mean, it's hot. You wouldn't want to hold your hands on it, but it's not anywhere near too hot. Just want to heat it up a little bit. It goes on there so much easier. I don't like running these down and pulling them on with the bolts because I've broke bolts doing that. Can you help me out for a second, Dad? I need you to hold this differential for me. These left-handed bolts, they keep getting me. It may, you may be able to hold it, maybe not. It's 65 foot-pounds. Yeah, yeah so. that's 15. I'm going to have to put it in a vise. These left-handed bolts, man, they keep getting me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just seems awkward, don't it? Yeah. There's 45, so I'll just go around a couple times. What's new? Yeah, not nothing really. It's same old, same old. What have you been doing today? I just knocking around, helping Granny get some decorations and stuff together. And... Christmas decorations? Yeah. I guess it's nothing out of ordinary for somebody to spend a year restoring something. No, it's that's I mean and that's somebody working pretty hard if they do it yeah. from start to finish. Can you hold on to this and I'll loosen that up? So you set it down? Yeah. Anywhere there it's fine. Yep, it's one of the old ones right there that I had to split to uh, 
to get off of the, uh, the original carrier that come in that rear end. go that one's seated yeah you put a little heat on them they slide right on so I'm using an inch pound torque wrench to set the bearing preload this is just test fitting just making sure that the bearings are seated in here and uh, you know this is the way we'll do on final assembly to make sure that we get our bearings preloaded properly in our uh, in our pinion here because they're different Bearing preloads are different between new and used bearings. And all this information comes with the pinion, ring and pinion set, and that's really nice. Almost. Now let's see what that's doing. That's still too much backlash. We can measure it real quick. Yeah, that's 40, 45 thousandths. So way too much. Just too much. Right so it carrier's got to go that way. So me and my dad got our backlash set, and on this gear set, it's six to ten thousandths is what they recommend, and we are right at six, maybe slightly above six. So happy with that, and now we're just going to do a contact pattern. See how they're actually mating together, the ring gear and the pinion. how the gears are mashing. Yep, so I can see how they how they're running together. And the last one I done I done for Wayne I done turned Yep. It worked out good. So I'm gonna paint some more right here. It says to do two patches. I'm just going to follow their instructions. Yeah, it had it had uh, like two something two high twos, really high ratio. You're going to make a mechanic out of Noel, ain't you? Yeah, she's pretty good. Yeah, you'd be surprised. She yeah. she she can. She's uh she's definitely handy if something ain't acting right or if something's starts acting different, so you can pick it out real quick. Yeah. All right, I guess we are basically ready to rotate this, and I'm just gonna grab it by hand and spin it. Uh, it said multiple times in both directions, I believe. at it yet. You think it looks good? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Pretty much in the center. Yeah, right there. That's, that's, you probably ain't going to get that no better. Right. Huh. Yeah, it's it does look good, doesn't it? And the depth looks good, right centered. At least that's what I believe I'm seeing. Both sides. Mm -hmm. All right. So all the initial fitting is is done on this thing. Big thanks to my dad for for all the assistance. He's he's a big help. He's done this before, and uh, you know having an extra set of hands is uh, handy. So now I just need to focus on my pinion bearing. I'm spitting all over the place. <laughs> My carrier bearing preload, 
Now, in the manual it says set your carrier bearing preload, the two bearings that this unit here runs on, as tight as possible without damaging shims for the installation. So, you know, that's all, all I need to do, and it's pretty tight right now, so it may be good, and all I need to do now, disassemble this thing, assemble it with my final pinion bearings, crush sleeve, and pinion seal, and that's it. Fill this thing full of oil, put my bearings in the end, insert the axles, and this thing's done. You can put quite a bit of Loctite on this because if you need to get this loose ever, you can heat this. You know, put a little heat on this and this red light Loctite will let loose. So it's important that this bolt stay in. So that rear axle went surprisingly well. And I know to a lot of people, axle work, you know, there's a mystery to it. It's like building a thousand piece puzzle to a lot of people in their minds. They just don't want to tackle it or they think that it's going to be so difficult that they're just not going to be able to do it. And I'll be honest, it's, I haven't done a bunch of them and that's just not the case. If you can read instructions, if you have an inch pound torque wrench, if you have some forearms to crush the crush sleeve and a dial test indicator, you could pretty much do this. I've done it in my driveway. I know a lot of you guys have as well. And it, it's just not as difficult as a lot of people make it out to be. So if you have a setup that you want to change, don't, you know, what are you waiting for? Don't be intimidated. You know, if you want to get better performance or just freshen up your rig, you know, it's easily obtainable for your average guy to put a set of gears in one of these and them run for a very long time. So, you know, big thanks to my dad for the help. He made things easier. He does have some experience doing this and, uh, you know, it's just nice to have an extra set of hands around, especially when it's your dad. So, big thanks to UConn as well. I appreciate the support. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, front axle. I'm going to do that next. And uh, we'll have a set of zero mile axles under that truck, which is exciting. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>